to participate. I see in the poll we got about 50-50 of the whether you've written a book. So first things first, if you've ever written a book on a scale of 1 to 10, how much more difficult was it than you thought it was? And if you haven't written a book, have you thought about writing a book? That's a simple yes or no question. <laughs> Let's bang keyboards, make book come out. Yes. Uh, Cole is put it at an eight. 11 says Frederick, eight. Jason, twice as difficult. Yeah, that scale wasn't very clear, was it? Like one to 10, I should have done multiples, yeah. So most people were saying it's much more difficult than they thought. Uh, Rick says he's got about 10 books in mind. <laughs> Josiah says he used a uh, ghostwriter and it's still with 6.5. Dang. Got three outlines, says Amy. All right, so I'm not going to talk too long on this side of the, the coin, but I have written a book, and it was not uh, the most delightful thing I've ever done in my life. It was fantastic to have done. Well, I don't know if it'll ever actually be fully done, as most things we create are. Um, but it was by far the most challenging thing I've ever been through. And it's not for the reasons I thought initially. I thought, you know, of course, like, creating a book is difficult, but... I really thought like the research part would be difficult, the um, the actual sitting down and getting things on the page, like that kind of stuff actually wasn't that tough for me. What was really difficult was actually knowing how to structure things correctly, like the actual structure of the content on the page, how to write in a cohesive manner throughout the entire manuscript so that it made sense, like the actual, the, the mechanics of the book um itself was very difficult david says i've written six and hundreds of articles david's got six out there look at that uh painful and lonely system yeah yeah i i can i can empathize with that too that that was an aspect um of when i put mine together where it was i underestimated how much just look it's not a social activity right you have to spend a lot of time focused and then like if you lose focus you're like what was i working on here and you come back six weeks later, you look at something, you're like, what is this trash? Uh, you know, so it it's not an easy endeavor. And there's there's a lot of beauty in that endeavor. Like, no doubt, it's one of the best parts of uh, life is overcoming challenges, right? Um, but there is easier ways now, right? And I think we all are familiar. Anyone not familiar with ChatGPT, Jasper, those guys? Um yeah, Frederick, one would assume that it'd be natural writer. Writing is the most painful thing for me to do, but it's one of the it's the most profitable use of my time. Sorry, I'm kind of easy in the background. Um but uh, you know, to that idea there, uh, Frederick, I I came across something, I wish I had this source in front of me. I have my library at home, but uh someone brought up a very good point about writing that stuck with me. And reading, is, or, or sorry, uh, speaking, as we speak, person, person, individual, the group, whatever, that we learn from birth. If you have parents who speak, you learn how to speak. It's a very natural thing. We naturally learn how to maybe not tell the best words, but we know how to tell stories. We know that, how to communicate correctly, right? Might not be the best at it. God knows I'm not, but you're going to learn how to speak naturally. However, learning to write and read is not natural. It is not something we learn automatically. We have to be taught it for years and years. And if you want to get decent at it, you have to be taught for years, years, years and years, and then you still might suck. <laughs> um, yeah. Frederick says GPT-4. That's right. Um, does that make sense, guys? Like, I, I, I came across that from a conceptual standpoint, it really got me thinking about the pain of writing itself when what's the end goal of all the things we're trying to put together anyways? It, it's not so much to learn how to write. We don't write a book to learn how to write better. It's a nice side effect, but it's like, if we had, if you had the money, if you just wanted to get your ideas out on the page and that was your main goal was not to learn how to write a book, if that's your main goal, and you had the money, you'd get a ghostwriter, right? Like Josiah said. Um, so to me, the next evolution of all this stuff 
is similar uh, to the iteration when it came to the printing press. 1400s, Gutenberg, whatever his name was. Writing had been around, but mass production of writing had not. And so reading was a luxury, writing was a luxury. God forbid you wanted to actually buy a book, it was going to cost, you know, literally the same cost as farms and whatnot, years, <laughs> years and years of wages. <clears throat> but the printing press came along and democratized that, right? And AI, we're in, we're in that special phase of AI where we're looking at the invention of uh, or a revolution similar to the printing press. It's democratizing structuring of information. And GPT-4 is probably the first iteration of this technology that it's been like, okay, I get it. This is absolutely bonkers. Um, everybody who's leveraging it right now, anybody using uh, in the chat, let me know. How many of you are using either Jasper, ChatGPT, similar platforms on a regular basis? And then I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just confess. I am like addicted now. I can barely write an email without <laughs> using it. In fact, little side tangent, um, one of my favorite things to do with GPT now is literally just uh, take take an email that someone's written me, pop it in there or a Facebook message or whatever, and then I'll say to chat GPT or Jasper or whatever, all right, make a reply to the email below. Let them know that I'm interested. Make it sound exciting. Uh, give them some context about how um, XYZ is important to me and how they're interesting and I love their blah, blah. So I'll literally just describe what I want the email to be like as opposed to actually write it, right? Um, David says, I want to learn Google type now. Okay, let's do let's do some demos. Let's show you show you guys what we're working on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm addicted to it. And it really is what gave birth to this technology of movable type, which we'll be looking at shortly. I'm gonna slowly just make myself smaller and movable type bigger. As we as we move forward here, um, but it, it stemmed from a the technology becoming more accessible, more usable, uh, and to more open <laughs> open AI uh, to us as individuals to access, and the idea of okay, literally the 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 genesis of this thing was can you create an entire book? From one single input and have it not be complete trash <laughs> right that's that's actually uh uh part of the problem has anybody written a book with chat gpt or attempted to or played around with the idea yet probably a few of you um i played around with it for several hundred hours at this point but um it's it's still a pretty challenging endeavor for one very simple reason it's books. Andrew, we'll talk about that a little bit because that's like a passion project of mine I want to get into a little later in life. But uh, right now I'm focused on the, the nonfiction. Not complete trash is the hard part. That's right. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of feedbacks. Wrote a book yesterday with ChatGPT. Derek, Derek knows what's up. Derek's already got it figured out. Um, but that's that was really the birth of Google Type was, hey, and you take a single input and with enough pieces of puzzle layout, like structure, sequences of iterations, can you have it actually create a book from one single input? And truth is, it works. So let's, let's take a look at how that works. And then also I want to emphasize um, uh, near the end, we'll talk about some of the uh, elements behind this, like the ethical concerns, the, the the actual like bigger picture of this stuff, but, but let's let's look at this. All right. Um. So this is movable type. You guys ready for a little demo? Can we get a yes or a maybe in the chat if we're ready for a demo? Let's just let's just build some stuff while we're going here. And keep in mind there is a bit of delay. So I'm actually going to ask the next question while uh, I'm getting this geared up. But I want from the chat some of your weirdest book ideas. I, weird is a wrong word, but let's put this thing through a, a, a challenge. Let's give it some interesting, very niche topics and let it run um, 
in the background while we're we're discussing this a bit. For instance, um, let's see. I, my friend got a um, a puppy dog recently, so I I put in there uh, how to raise a uh, French bulldog puppy the first something years, and this was the output. We'll take we'll take a look at specifically how these are structured and what this means. Uh, getting a lot of yeses, so I think we're ready. I think our first book should be. What do you guys think? What should we What should we create here? Uh, sorry, Douglas. This is going to be nonfiction. Ten critical infrastructure risks program. I don't even know what those words mean. Um, everything to know and care. Lucky bamboo. Well, that's what's lucky bamboo. How to run a successful dental practice into the ground. Uh, you know what? We're going to take that one because I have, I have an idea with that one. Newbies could, oh, look at this. Do you go straight to the offer page? I don't have an offer page. Um, how to teach empathy to healthcare workers. I like that one. How to write a movie like Quentin Tarantino. Dude, you know what? Let's start with that one. And, and then I'll share some of my, my silliest ones, uh, that we've created with them. How to become a pilot. A good one there, Eddie. I, I want like more um, weird niche ones. All right. Okay. So let's put this in here. Let's start with um, how to write a movie like Quentin Tarantino. All right. So the way this works, folks, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I'm going to give it a project name. How to write a movie like Quentin Tarantino. Can you guys see the, the text? Actually, you can't see that kept that well, can you? Let me zoom in a little bit. The screen's going to be moving around while I zoom in and around and stuff. But, um, all right. Gardening for toddlers. <laughs> Personal relationship advice by QAnon. Oh, my gosh. These are great. Okay. How to write a movie. Let's put that in the arts and photography. And then the big idea here. So this is really... Um, the first edition of this software, the uh, platform, the way it works is we're just giving it one big idea. It could be as simple as how to write a movie like Quentin Tarantino. We can get majorly in depth with that big idea and put our own twists on it. But for the first iteration, the simplest uh, version of movable type is you can just put in one, one input. We don't have to put anything more than that. How to write a movie like Quentin Tarantino. Um, let's just do that. We're going to take a couple of these and, and do them. Um, it does have the ability to write marketing materials. I'm going to skip that for this one. Actually, yeah, we'll skip it for now. And then we have the ability to skip our review process, but I'm going to leave that on and we're going to make a book soon enough. We're going to have courses in here. Is there a uh, character limit on input? Kind of. We can take a look at that Douglas, um, while it's going. So let me make sure you guys can see. What's going on here? So when we start the process, it's actually building in the background right now. So we'll be able to watch it kind of build out. And this is honestly one of the funner parts of designing software is like getting the UI UX sorted out. So it's working in the background. It's going to, it's going to be some hangups probably while we're going here, but it, it's going to generate how to become a legendary copywriter. All right, Frederick, that's a good one. And Douglas, yeah, just to speak to that for a second, no, uh, there is an area to add in more context and we're working on author profiles so you could uh, have it capture your own voice and do custom voices, things like that for yourself and clients. A lot of fun stuff in the works. All right, let's see. It came up with a title for us, The Fade In to, to or Fade Into Tarantino, Mastering Cinema's Provocateur. So it came up with a title for us, a subtitle, Demystifying the art of Quentin Tarantino's storytelling. Oh, sometimes it's been doing that. I got to fix that. It's it uh, is refreshing randomly and kind of messing up the the layout. But it's fine. We're we're gonna we're gonna get all these little bugs. They're like more visual bugs. Um, all right. Yeah, it's doing it again. That's lame. All right. Well, we'll let it finish its its uh thing here because what happens is it's first doing a base set of research it's compiling information about the subject it's defining our reader 
profile, so who the book is um, suited for. Um, it's coming up with a promise. What is the big promise of the book? Oh, come on. Why is it refreshing like that? I'm, I'm literally going to pull up the raw data in the back end so we can... Well, it's fine. We'll give it a second. Because once it's done, it'll just quit refreshing. Um, but yeah, it's it's defining all the core elements of what makes a book work, right? Yeah, it's only acting up because Murphy's Law. That is true. Yeah, it's funny, guys. Just the development story on this thing. I've been working on this 10 to 12 hours a day, nonstop, for the last... What? I don't even want to know. Way too long. Um... Yeah, Greg, I'll talk about that too. I'm going to write that down as a question. I want to talk about the freshness. Uh, I'm going to write that down because um, I've thought about that a lot and there's a couple things going on we'll talk about. All right, so here's here's what it came up for us. So right now it's it's working on the book outline for us, um, but it came up with the title, Fade in Quarantine. Oh, come on, it's refreshing again. All right, hang on one second, guys. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I got to fix this. This I literally hand coded and Sean does not know how to code. So um, part of why we're launching this thing is to get folks involved to help us. Uh, there we go. There, it's fine. Just refresh. It's fixed. So what we have here, we have a title, subtitle, and we can go in and edit and modify these, of course. Like you can go in, customize all this stuff, um, refine it if you want. Say you want to refine the problem that it's working with. All this stuff is edible. So this is phase two of our book development. We put in our big idea. We're letting it give us some suggestions here. And then from here, we can edit, refine it. Since I don't know much about filmmaking, um, who, who, who suggested this? Cole? Cole, you're going to have to um, tell me if this is any good. But the idea here is that books work with a formula at least most basic nonfiction books do, right? We're working on different types of formulas and making it so you can control a lot of the different variables. But the very the most basic version of a good nonfiction book is a problem solution book. It is a book that addresses a very specific problem for a very specific person in a very specific amount of time. And with that in mind, that's part of the foundation here of what uh, generates this material. So at this phase, it's telling us we want to review, edit, refine. We've got our outline, all that good stuff. We can go in, we could re So this is the outline it came in, out for us. Chapter one, um, busting the myths, Tarantona's storytelling isn't just for geniuses. So it's giving us a full outline we can work with from a uh, standpoint, right? Is that, is that pretty clear, guys? Can you see the outline there? Yeah. Um, yeah, John, well, let's talk about that because uh, that's a good question. I'm going to actually I'm gonna copy some of these questions and pop them into like a little document here. One sec. Um, where's my little, I have a little BB editor. Where are you at? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Who knows what kind of code you're seeing on this page. Whatever. All right. Um, I'm going to grab a few of these questions. Okay. So we're going to review it and we're going to approve it. Of course, like, fun part is, like, we can customize it at that point. I should probably just have Josiah on here doing the demo. I feel like he's he's pitched it enough. So what it's doing now is it's taking all of our base information and all the research it did and whatnot, and it's starting to generate our chapters in the background. Uh, Hanan, um, yes. It will work with other languages as long as OpenAI and uh, the other um, platforms we're working with um, support the language. Okay, Josiah is going to hate me. I got to show just a little bit of the. No, I can't. He'll. I want to show the engine in the background because it's so beautiful, but I, I'm not going to. All right. Um, it's going. It's gonna. Uh, let's see. Where, there we are. Yeah. Okay. I see what's going on here. Give me just a second, guys. 
course right when i start the engine there's there's a layer like the um uh there's a ui layer that i'm still getting sorted out that like to visually represent the thing as it's building and it's fantastic that it is down at the moment. Give me just a second, guys. There it is. All right, we're back. All right, so in the background, it's working on our books. It's prepping each chapter based on our outline. Um, is it private or is there data being used? Dana? Um, I don't know. With OpenAI, it kind of depends, right? So we're tapping into GPT-4 for the most part. Um, but as far as we're concerned, we're, we're not using your books or data. Um, and we can talk at the end a little bit about some of the murky copyright situations and legal stuff that's going on. But in the background, you can see we've got our full entire book being built out for us in real time, which is kind of fun to watch. Not only because I've got hundreds of hours invested here, but um, we're going to let that go while it's running. Uh, Greg, no... Um, we're keeping it uh, open AI agnostic. So we're going to be trying to tap into other models as well. So it's not just open AI. But it's almost done. So our average book right now is around 150 pages and about 30, 35,000 ish words, give or take. Um, and the idea with it isn't so much to give you a book that you just you make and then you take it off and you go and and put it in upload amazon kindle or whatever um the idea here is that we're starting with what i don't have a better term for it but we're calling it a manuscript our first draft right and we talked if you just are hopping in we talked a little earlier about the pain and the headache of putting a, a book together isn't so much the knowledge that we have or the information that we know, because we've spent years with a lot of times with this stuff we want to put into a book. Uh, the problem usually comes down to how to structure the book. And that's really what we're trying to solve here with this. How do you keep it from repeating the same illustration examples over and over? Yeah, so Brad, not to get too nitty gritty, but um, a lot of the a lot of the process in the generation is actually building on itself. So we're using AI to talk to itself and analyze the topic, analyze the outputs from the topics, analyze, um, it, like ask itself for recommendations about, okay, this is a book on filmmaking. What's some good frameworks that should go in here, right? Um, so no two books are gonna be remotely alike. They're gonna be similar in structure uh, but they're they're never going to be exactly the same in um, uh, content or material because it's kind of like um, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. You might follow the same recipe for a cake, but if you throw in a a random element uh, or you know a random factor in there, it's going to taste very different, right? All right, so it's compiling it now. That's good. Should be done any second. <laughs> Yeah, Douglas, 90% of books are similar structure. That's true. Yeah, we're hoping um, to introduce more and more structures, but all right, so it's done. Hooray. Let's pull this over, zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better view of what we got. Um, there we are. So what we have, we have it all integrated with Google Docs, by the way. Uh, how do we know if what was written is correct, right, or valuable? Ideally, you would read it and edit it. So this is our first draft, right? This is, I'm just going to open a new tab so that we can take a little closer look. And we'll <clears throat> we'll talk through some of the, the structure of the book itself, why it was made that way, uh, and how I think, or why I know this will be useful to folks like yourselves. We'll actually into that 
lots of good questions. Um, I'm going to try not to get too distracted because there's a lot of questions. Um, but first, let's put in a table of contents. I still haven't figured out how to put a table of contents in dynamically, but there we go. And then let's see where we ended up at. All right, we're at 33,000 words, 151 pages. Now, of course, that doesn't mean much if it's not any good. I'm not a film connoisseur, but um, just to say I need a copy of an ADHD. Yes, I, I got you there, Martha. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, I got to write down. Martha just reminded me of something. Uh, okay. My ADD kicking in. So what do we have? We have a book. Here's the outline of it. And I'm just going to scroll because it's kind of just fun to see what it output there. And what, 10 minutes maybe? 15 minutes? And it's all in here, right? So what do we have? Why Why is this any good? Um, we're we're going to start another one in the background while this one's going. What were some of the other ones? Let's do a fun one. Let's do a... Uh, uh, Let's, let's tap into an, a meme. Um, I'm thinking uh, philosophical lessons. Uh, one can learn from both Barbie and Oppenheimer. Did I spell that right? There's no way it spelled that right. I'm going to have to Google it. Did anybody else do this even? Wow, I did spell it right. Nope. Did I? Two Ps. I did spell it right. Oh, my gosh. All right. And this one's going to be uh, art, no, philosophy. Do we have a philosophy? We do. Big idea. Uh, there are many crossover philosoph philosophical lessons one can learn from both uh, Barbie and... Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. Sure. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this last time. You can put in a ton of extra context here. So if you have like a framework of your own that you want to put in there, like you came up with the the, the A's of influence, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, you're able to put that in here for extra context and it will um, reference that. All right, let's start that one in the background while we're looking at this book it just generated. Um, uh, Ofer, yeah, that's it's GPT-4. Yep. Now in here in Google Docs, so we have this integrated with Google Docs for a couple important reasons. Um, one, everybody just ends up copying and pasting it in Google Docs anyways, right? <laughs> uh, Brad, yes, you will be able to put your own outline. Um, at the moment, uh, by the end of the month, we'll have our like custom outline path fleshed out right now it's still so dynamic it like it'll take your outline and kind of make its own version of it which is not ideal for people who want to do that um but okay let's talk about the structure of the book itself real quick so you guys can see in general how um how these books come out and why they're why they've been built this way and why this is such a nice process for in the future when we want to uh further add to um, the different outputs and refinements and different types of books. Like we have a great platform to build from. So we start out with our preface and this is designed as a, from the author, a letter to the reader, like most introductions of any book, right? Pretty straightforward. And it's, it's just thanking them for reading, highlight what's going to be in it, the aim of the book. Um, so this book aims to give you to guide you through. In fact, you know what? I'm going to share this. You guys can pull it up um, if you'd like to see it. I'll pop it in the chat here. Yes, Brad, you can put your own outline in. I, I don't know if I touched on that enough. Um, but yes, yeah, so our introduction ties into that, right? And by the way, guys, just so we're clear, this is not a pitch webinar. At the end, I am going to give you the ability to sign up, but we don't have a big, like, crazy pitch deck or anything. This is our debut, show it off a little bit, get feedback from people, and invite some folks who want to be in our alpha group, uh, which we'll, we'll touch on here in a moment. Um, but yeah, our introduction, pretty straightforward. And the idea, again, I want to reiterate this, 
is not for us to necessarily come in and just go, you know, file, download as an EPUB and upload to Kindle. So I'm sure there will be plenty of people who do that. The idea here is this takes a lot of the heavy lifting, just like a ghostwriter would, out of the base set of content for your big idea book. Your big idea might be a book about Quentin Tarantino and uh, why he's such a great cinematographer. I don't know. Um, but yes, so our introduction there, just give it an overview, just like you would. Now you can come in here, refine this, of course, like put it more in your voice if you'd like. It's it's generally designed to be a pretty uh, broad voice um, that could really be adapted to anyone at the moment. But um, I'm gonna put a page right here. But yeah, easily adaptable. Now each chapter has a similar flow, and we can edit, we can remove things, we can add things. Of course, like it's Google Docs and do whatever, right? Um, but the general structure is each chapter is opening up with a story. And after a long time of looking at a ton of different books, my favorite books um, in the nonfiction world, most of them open up with either a story about someone related that's in, uh, experiencing the problem related to the topic of the book, or it's a story from the author's point of view, or it's a historical context story. But generally, there are almost always stories to illustrate the principles behind the book. Um, some of these are better than others. It generally is going to depend on the um, uh, sorry, the, the chapter subject. So a lot of times you might remove some, you might modify some, you might refine, take them out, refine them, things like that. Uh, but each one opens with a story. And it's generally like a novella style. Here, we'll take a look at one. Uh, chapter two, Beyond Violence, Understanding uh, Tarantino's Sophisticated Craft. Humor me while I try to do my um, best narration voice. It was a typical afternoon at a busy New York film publication hub. Slanted shadows cast by the high-rise buildings around the strip, bearing witness to the advancing day. Mark, a fledgling screenwriter, sat at his laptop in a corner, in a quiet corner of the studio, of the bustling studio, engrossed amid uh, the humdrum. Uh, his immediate task was to deliver a screenplay that was not just commercially viable, but also reverberated with sophistication and depth of a seasoned filmmaker ma maker like Quentin Tarantino. As Mark's eyes, I'm very, by the way, I got to go approve. I'm so excited to see um, Barbie's uh, Oppenheimer book. Okay. As Mark's eyes uh, glided across the screen, a row of words uh, on a screen, his mind shifted carefully through the memories from Tarantino's film, Pulp Fiction. Every scene waxed lyrically in it about a masterful blend of fine detailing, carefully designed dialogues, and layers of narrative uh, intricacies. Okay, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but you get the idea. It opens with a strong story from the point of view of the reader experiencing the problem of the chapter. Then it goes into actually the discussion of the chapter. So each chapter generally has uh, two to ten main points that it's covering, and it does so in a pretty straightforward way. Unlocking the truth behind his storytelling, in this chapter, we're going to dive deep in Tarantino's craft, giving you a behind-the-scenes look at how he creates such riveting stories. You get the idea. Now, something it does do very well, and I spent a, way too many hours on, was this concept here of building in frameworks and processes uh, into the book. So what, what that means is every book that you generate, it's going to read itself and say, all right, I think a framework should be put in right here in this book. So here's a framework we came in. Step in methodology, bringing the Tarantino essence to your script. Um, let's journey into a framework that will aid you in incorporating the richness of, uh, it's called this uh, step in model. Study, translate, emulate, and practice. So a lot of times the frameworks are in that. Or what are those, um, what's that called? When it's, like the step framework, I forget what it's called. I should know, I, I wrote it into the logic, but I forget. Uh, so this is really cool. It'll put in frameworks. And again, this is like, if you look at any book that you pull off the shelf, a lot of times they're gonna have their own frameworks in here. This is gonna give you ones that it recommends based on your topic. 
acronym. There we go. That's what it's looking for. Yeah, you get the idea, right? Um, and it adds those in where it thinks it should be added. Um, here's another one. Craft of Ensemble, Web of Intrigue. It's a fun little framework. But you get the idea. Then, of course, it closes out um, in a very not... Or it knows it's the end of the book, so it's going to go in here and write a conclusion, thanking them for reading it and recapping everything. Generally, we'll end with a pretty strong... Let's see. Take a leap, hold your pen, start writing those scene descriptions, let your character speak, tell the story they are yearning to express, and do it all in a cinematic style you have learned. As you illuminate the silver screen with your imagination, don't forget the words of the master himself. The good idea will survive. And so, dear reader, it's time to fade to black and rise as the director of your own story. Your protagonist awaits your command. Your audience, full of anticipation, awaits the twist in the plot. The celluloid awaits your imprint. That's pretty good, guys. I'm not going to lie. I like that. Uh, Sean, yes, you can inject other stuff into it. Um, go forth with bold landscapes of your imagination, resonant dialogues, myriad characters, and the backing of Tarantino's cinematic wisdom. And remember... In the grand theater of storytelling, you are your own master. I, I like that. That's pretty strong, right? And that's the cool thing. Oh, the unexpected philosophers unraveling life's mysteries with Barbie and Oppenheimer. Yes. <laughs> I am so excited about this one. Um, I don't even I don't even know. We'll, we're gonna look at that one in just a moment. And then and then I promise, guys, I'm I'm gonna actually like show you how we plan on launching this thing. Um I, before we get into this fun one, I want to touch on kind of a, a heavy one. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but it's one that really got me re-energized because I've been, this has been tough, man, building this thing out. Uh, I'm excited to get some, we've got some funding behind it, all that good stuff, but it is, it is not, um, not as easy as I thought uh, building this thing. Let's see, wait. That was a fun one. You can put in like relationship books. I'm trying to find a very specific one. Um, philosophy of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. That was fun to see what it came out with. Leveraging social media to build an affiliate marketing business without needing a large following or big big budget. By the way, has anybody made any money off a of book in here? Um. Because I have. I've done decent with some books. I don't know where... There's a book in here I want to show you guys. Eh, maybe we'll have it right. Let's have it, while, while we look at the uh, op, Barbie Oppenheimer one, let's have it right one more book. Let's write, have it write an emotionally charged, super dope book. Um, you guys suggest. I want it to be emotional, though. Let me see. Uh, Randy says about 30 grand. Boom. Nice. Um, Gilly, does Sean uh, address the max word count per chapter? Um, g g yeah, so the word count's going to be dynamic. It's really going to depend on the chapter itself. We have an average, let's see, of about 3,000 words per chapter, give or take. Some chapters might be four, some might be two. The idea. Um, I I need a physical copy of my two, Garrett. Addressing rational. There we go. Addressing rational trauma. I'm not. Is rational trauma a emotionally charged super duper book? Unwinding the left and right in the age of billionaires. Ooh, that's a that's a touchy one. Dealing with Mayor Smith. Yeah. So. Dr. Jim, um, oh, hang on, I, I made this one for me and my wife, by the way, um, mastering the art of raising one and five-year-old simultaneously and fostering healthy growth for both children without breaking a sweat. I swear this, this software is going to help bring in the age of ultra-specific books. Um, 
Divorced parents, how to see your kids even when... I like that one. Oh, sorry, relational trauma. I'm so sorry. I can't read. You think with all this time. Um, yeah, Tim, that's kind of the, what we're building over the next iteration of this thing, right? Is version, uh, so over the next month, like how can we flesh that out, right? How can we make it more dynamic, add in more customization, stuff like that? <laughs> Andrew, I'm sorry, guys. Relational, I promise. Guide defining Sasquatch. I love it. Um, unwoking the left and right. That's interesting. All right, Jim, we're going to go with yours. Um, dealing with miscarriage because, guys, that is a super heavy topic. But I love uh, what it does with this um, more emotional topics. Let's just say, let's let's be more specific, okay? So, of course, there's general topics. But, um, say a young couple. Let's be more specific. Gosh, that's so heavy. We're going to do it, but we might, we're going to have to really dig into the Oppenheimer one at this. Um, but the idea here, in my opinion, with books that do really well, they solve a very specific problem. Not just a specific problem, but a very specific problem. Uh, done very likely. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna let that oh uh, go here. Parenting relationships. Just start that one in the background. Uh, twins at thirteen weeks. That's rough, man. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a fun one. One more fun one. Divorce, divorce parents. How to? That's a fun one, right? Gosh. All right. Let's let's let this one run. We'll we'll be that in the background in a minute, but. Uh, for now, we're gonna we're gonna look at the the unraveling last life's mysteries with Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, now, something cool that this does in the background as well is, as you know, when you're marketing a book, you want to know about your audience. So it actually gives us, by the way, and I forget to emphasize these things because I get so caught up in the the book generation part. Um, but it gives us a full breakdown on who our targeted audience is like their situation, who they are, like a deep understanding of, of who, and, and it actually generates marketing materials as well. So in the background, I'm going to have it generate marketing materials for this book. I'm going to write that in the background while we're taking a look at this book. Uh, so it'll write a sales page, a Kindle sales page, advertising copy, give you some marketing uh, ideas and keywords for the book itself. Um, but Okay, I've got. I can't see my screen. Ah. All right. Then I tell you what. Right before the top of the hour, I'll introduce you guys to how we can get work together. Um, yes, Grace. It can create a book. Literally any topic, any nonfiction topic. Um, and to that point, the reason this works. With the way that AI is right now, someone asked earlier, well, open AI, you know, it doesn't access to the latest and greatest information. It's kind of fixed in time, I think 2001. The idea here is the books it's generating are um, subjective. They're not deeply objective. And that's where you can come in as an editor and add more objective information. Which, what I mean by that is like, it's not pulling in facts, figures, statistics, all that stuff to to position the arguments, it's pulling in rational ideas and concepts to explain topics um, and build arguments. So that gives you a lot of leeway to come in later if you want to add more like in-depth um, like statistics, things like that to support the arguments. But the reason we designed it that way is because as you guys know, if you're into this AI stuff, it can actually make up statistics if you ask it to. Like it'll make up information. So the, the only way really to deal with that at the moment is to have it work with conversational style arguments for um, one way or another way of doing things, of solving a problem. So it's not going to say, um, here's what, like, like if it's a book about how to um, uh, make money selling a book. It's not going to go out and find all the statistics about 
here's how much authors make and here's you know here's why uh being an author in america is great but it's like it's going to instead go about um making the argument for why being an author is such a good thing for your life your business all that good stuff right does that make sense yeah hallucinations that's what they call it and yes you can drop research in there and outline specific things um yeah, and Douglas, I mean, the use case for all this stuff is bonkers, right? Like, I'm sure you guys could come up with a million different ways. I'll, I'll link this one in the chat as well. Um, and I haven't even had a chance really to go out and, and that's why I'm excited about this group coming in to help us in the alpha beta version of this, because they're going to go out and make a lot of money with this, I would imagine, <laughs> where I, I don't even have time at the moment. Um, Okay, so wrote the introduction pretty well. Let's see, Unraveling the Philosophers in Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, yeah, you can, Tim. Oh, sorry, can you ask it? That's something we are working on, um, like remixing certain things, but something I'll emphasize, guys, even though this is outputting an incredible first draft for us, if you really want this to be your book, just like if you had a ghostwriter write your book, you're going to want to read it. You're going to want to revise it. You're going to want to go in and add your own stories. I mean, we're going to build tools around it to help you do that. But honestly, the bonkers side of this is that from its very first draft, it's better than 99% of us could do on our first draft. Pretty wild. Uh, at least, I mean, from my point of view. <laughs> um Rick, um, in a way, yes, you can through the edit, like there's a middle stage, right? Where we approve it to be actually generated. You can add stuff in there and it will extract from that, right? A lot of good questions. You guys are full of good questions. Okay. I just want to look over the story and structural. I'm just curious how, what, uh, um, what it came up with here. Just have to look at this real quick. All right. I'll see. Okay. So this um, this one about, was this? Yeah. So this is our Oppenheimer one. I had to write the marketing materials, right? Um, so you can see it actually wrote out a sales page, a Kindle sales page. Um, it, it outlines it for us. The hook, unlock the hidden wisdom of philosophy and revolutionize your understanding of the world with the unexpected philosophers unraveling life's mysteries. You ever wonder why philosophy can be a uh, how? So you get the idea, like giving us a first starting point for some advertisements, some marketing ideas, keywords, all that fun stuff, right? Okay. I could go on and on about that. Um, this one, this one's pretty rough, but these emotion, highly emotionally charged books, I found it does a really good job with the storytelling. It's wild. Um, now, I'm, I'm curious. You guys all know AI now. This isn't, you know, AI in general is well known um, conceptually. So it's not like super magical at the moment <laughs> as much as it probably used to be. Um but the output, I think, is fairly unique. As far as I know, there's no one else doing it this way uh, with generating books and marketing materials and all that good stuff. If you had to put a finger um, on the pricing here and think of it in terms of context of um, the time it saves and the what you can do with the output, I'm curious what you guys think. Actually, that's a very dangerous question. I'll give you some context. If you were to go out and get a ghostwriter to get you a basic 150 page uh, version of your big idea into a book form, if you want it to be decent, it's going to cost you about 20 grand. No, no, um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can go on Fiverr, maybe get it for five grand. <laughs> you daisy chain a bunch of them together. Um, per project or per month? Eh, I'll let you guys speculate as to what the pricing is going to be. Because I'll tell you this much. We've, we've been thinking about it a lot. 
it's hard to price this because for one person who takes this, revise, you know, you could generate 10 different versions of the same book, compile them and edit them together and get something wild in a day, right? Um, for the right people, this is going to be unbelievably valuable. I crossed over about $1.3 million in book sales of my book this year. Um, and I will obviously point out that that has a ton to do with marketing as much as anything else. But um, there's Nick. Where you been, Nick? Jeez. Do you think it started at three or something? I love you, though. Um, 30K goes right 100 page book. Yeah. All right. A lot, a lot we can do with it. But we're not charging per book um, because while I think there is some there's some discussion room here. I, I think limiting people to like one book per price, you know, it's like you're going to come up with multiple ideas. You're going to like some, you're going to not like others. So we thought more of a credit system would make more sense. Um, Nick. Uh, Gray, sorry. My book was handwritten, but it took me several years to write. Um, and I, I averaged, I did the math on it. It was about four hours a page when it came to research, development, launching it, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, if you're, I mean, if you're a ghostwriter, geez, if you've got clientele, you could already, like, you could take their interview, plug it in here. There's, there's a lot of iterations of this, and so why we're excited about the alpha group coming in is because we're going to be able to work with them uh, to help us add in, like, since we have such a small team, and I'm mainly doing most of the development here, um, we're able to build fast and, and uh, make changes quick. From mourning to resilience, walking through the valley of miscarriage. Now, I'm not going to touch on this one much because it's like triggering. Sorry, guys. Um, Arthur, welcome, man. It's okay. We'll try to do some. Uh, let's see. This is a heavy book, but I want to, I want to just something that I'm very proud of this. If, if all this thing did was write introduction to chapters as stories, I would be proud of it. In fact, it does all this other stuff is pretty wild, but, um, you know what? That's a little too heavy. I'll, I'll share this one with you guys. Look at this afterwards. I don't, I don't want to like do any, it's a little heavy, but the thing that these emotionally charged books do, and it's why I think when you're writing or coming up for the prompt or the input for your book, wrapping it in an emotional element, like why, um, why starting your real estate business from scratch is as painful as giving birth or something, you know, like that's a bad analogy. Sorry. Anybody who's given birth in here. Um, but it does a very good job of painting the picture of people experiencing the problem that the books solve. Amy, I love that. I, I really am hoping, you know, my big picture for this thing is that, um, and I put it in the emails as much as I could, but my hope is that people with these big ideas for books, you know, I, at the top of the hour when we started this, I asked people like, you know, tell me a bit about, like, how many of you have a book you... We'll, we'll ask the question again. How many of you have a book that you've wanted to write for a very long time because you have a great idea for it, right? Um, but you, have, you haven't had the time, you haven't had the energy, all that good stuff, right? Um, that's our goal here with this, is to take away that barrier of the time and energy to get the first freaking draft done. Because guess what? Editing a book is not... Not nearly as difficult. It's kind of like going into an art museum and knowing if you like the picture on the wall. Like, we're all art connoisseurs if we know that the art is good. Same with this stuff. If you read it and you know it's good, you're going to find yourself... Um, let's make some marketing materials for it. Um, in a much better starting point. And if, guess what it's also going to do? It's going to... Increase your chances of succeeding with this uh, endeavor of writing a book. 
by by a large percentage. I don't know what percentage, but I would I would imagine quite a bit. All right. Okay, David. I'm sorry. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna pitch this. You guys, you know in your head what you can do with this thing. You know what you can't do with it. You know we're we're just getting started. Um, but here's a couple things. Um, we're going to be opening the door today as an alpha beta program. You're going to find bugs. You're, we have a Slack community. We're going to work together to keep improving this thing. Um, but what we're going to, and then we're, we're not going to be selling it for the rest of the month. Um, might leave a little leeway just because I know some people it's like three in the morning and you're driving or you just got here. But so we might give a little bit of a window. I don't. I don't want to go too hard on scarcity. Um, but we are not going to keep the doors open because we don't want like 10,000 people in here breaking this thing so much that we can't actually maintain it. And it is very expensive to run. I should have you guys know the margins here are actually tighter than you might <laughs> uh, not realize with OpenAI. ChatGPT 3.5 is cheap. GPT-4 is 60 times more expensive. And this is mostly GPT-4. Um, okay, so if you guys want to be involved, here's the offer. We're going to give it to you at a discount. When this goes live, we're going to be charging $3.99 a month for 10 books a month. Um, we're going to launch this as an alpha program. With everything you've seen, a lot of things you haven't seen, uh, we're going to double the credits for you guys. Uh, my face is in the way of the... Uh, the offer here. Um, you're going to get double the credits. You're going to... Oh, I should probably put the link here. I'll put the link in the chat, folks. Um, and then we'll talk about it. Go to movabletype.ai slash join. Um, you can sign up. Now, what this gets you. This gets you a whole year. This gets you um, everything we've looked at, everything we're adding to it private Slack channel, multi-user account. So we have the ability to add teams in here. So if you've got a team or you've got clients, um, you'll be able to add a few folks in here. I'm not even sure what the seats are going to be yet, but as a team member, um, you know, call it your partner, whatever in your business, they'll be able to come in and generate books as well, edit your books, work with you, uh, see, your, see your outputs. Like I can see my team's people in here. Um, you can go in and work on theirs because it's all Google Docs based, right? And by the way, you'll have unlimited Google Docs, of course, obviously. Like, you know, you'll be able to share it out of Google Docs with anybody, um, but you'll be able to have a few uh, extra seats within the, the membership itself. Um, most importantly, you'll be able to get badges. <laughs> okay, maybe not most importantly, um, but. You're gonna be a day one believer, first 100 alpha user, blah, blah, blah. Of course we want badges. Uh, Tony, that's gonna to be 20 bucks a month for those joining today. Oh, look, I spent way too much time getting this to work. But look. <laughs> it fills out your name on a little card. Isn't that fun? So 240 cards a year. Um, you, I, I'm just gonna tell you what I would like to hear in, in, if I was making a commitment like this. It, it, uh, it is a yearly commitment. However, you can go in in the platform itself um, and you know adjust your rebilling as you see fit. Uh, Dream book review, Greg. I want to work with each and every one of the folks who sign up, and anybody who joins today. And you want me to take a look at your book that you've generated, or in the process of editing uh, within the Slack group, we're going to all work together to refine these books. So. If you make something you're like, I love it, it's great, help me improve it, or I hate it, it's terrible, how can I improve it, or what am I doing wrong, we're going to work with you. Uh, one credit is one book, uh, Josiah. Now, of course, in this alpha phase, we're going to be pretty lenient. Let's say you go through your 20 in a month, which it's a lot of books. That's what? That's 2,300 or 2,000 whatever pages. <laughs> of content. Um, if you go through them and you're like, hey, Sean, I still haven't gotten to where I want yet, just message me on the Slack. We'll, we'll work with you. We're not gonna be like, you know, crazy about it. Um, so go ahead, get signed up folks um, and we'll work together. 
to write some amazing books. I want to see what you guys can do with it. And here's kind of the roadmap. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I was hoping to make some slides for it, but you know, debugging technology up till about an hour before this started. Um, the roadmap for the idea with this is we're going to be building out um, much more intricate levers to create this book uh, in your own voice, adding in your own stories. Like we have a concept for a literal audio interview where you just sit and talk to the software and then it turns it into a book. Um, we don't have a monthly at the moment. For right now, we're looking for folks who see the financial implement, uh, like what they can do with this from a financial standpoint where 2K isn't going to be a headache. Um, so we, we will be releasing this eventually at a monthly, but at the moment, we're just doing that for folks. Uh, we really want folks who are in there for the long haul with us. Um, okay. Yeah. Theo, that makes sense, you know, and, and at the moment we're not going to implement that. Um, we are looking at like one-off book pricing, um, as an option eventually. Um, and not entirely sure what that's going to look like, to be honest, but that's really the tough part just to be transparent here. You know, this isn't really a hard pitch to, to you guys. Cause I know the people who see the value and like, know what this can do, or it's like no, a no brainer. If you're not sure, probably not for you. Right. Um, as far as like what it can actually do, but what's been interesting in this whole thing is the value proposition of what it actually brings to the table for some is so incredibly high. Like for me, for instance, just, you know, my experience with writing a book, putting it out there and marketing it well, because it solved a very specific problem. And I spent it, you know, I made a decent living off of it. But for some people it's, it's, they're, they're not sure what to do with it. It's going to be a bit tougher of a call if that makes sense. Right. Uh, thank you. Digi skills to her digital skills. I'm going to learn to read one of these days. Um, and cash flow is cash flow. That's one year free trial. There we go. That's a good idea. Um, helpfulness. There, there likely is going to be a replay. I, I'm not going to play the urgency play on here. We're going to, we're going to be, um, uh, opening the doors completely. And, oh, there's one more thing I should mention that we're doing as a special offer for folks who sign up. Um, we are eventually going to open this up to, um, uh, uh oh, no such payment intent. You might need to refresh the page there, Nick. Um, there may be some headaches getting signed up, by the way, guys, because <laughs> we uh, we just implemented the the user interface uh, recently. So if you hit a snag, um, I'm going to go ahead and get. I'll give you my personal email in here too. If you have any uh, questions, just shoot me an email. Okay, Nick, thanks. Um, but yeah, it, it's tough to, to price this thing out. We seriously thought about just keeping this internal and doing it as a software internally and just selling it as a service and creating books for like two, three, 10 K a pop. Um, but yeah, it's much more fun to try to take it big time. All right, let's do some Q and a folks. If you guys have any questions, let's chat. While um, I'm going to also look over to my team and, and see if things seem to be working okay. I'm going to zoom my face up big because I want to check real quick. Jesse, you're awesome. Yeah. Appreciate the support, buddy. Um, there's some tech stuff I'm going to look at in the background just to make sure it's smooth. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, we have had quite a few sales and some hiccups in the sign up flow. <laughs> um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, yes, Tony, that is the offer. Douglas. Yes. Let's talk on that. Uh, Jim will probably open, be open till tomorrow at midnight. I'm tired of the, I'm tired of doing that heavy, hard marketing stuff. <laughs> I, 
I haven't done, I, I can't do the hard pitch anymore. Um, all right. I'm going to just let that thing go in the background. Hopefully everything, uh, well, I'm going to be spending the next five hours here unraveling all this uh, sign up tech headache, but let's do some Q&A while we're looking at this, guys. Ratliff, thank you, man. Thanks for joining. Guys, be sure, um, no, the, the credits roll over, Ed. Um, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I should know that. Um, I think they'll last at least a year. Like, if you're paying for a year, you're going to get a year of the credits. Um, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say they, they, um, uh, they're your credits. You just bought them. So use them. Enjoy. Um, thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. Oh, man. Aaron, dude, you are, we're, you're an old school internet guy like myself, man. It's weird being old internet people, isn't it? Um, Grace, at the moment, we don't have PayPal. Eddie, thanks, man. Go whiskey shopping for you, dude. Appreciate you, Eddie. Um, Oscar, buddy, it's okay. I'll, I'll be trying to do my best to get a replay out this afternoon. I think some of the sign-up flow has been a little messy, so i got to clean that up a little. Tim, I should accept Bitcoin, except by the time it got here, it'd be worth less. It's not fair. Uh, Jim, at the moment, we don't have a payment plan in place. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is going to be $3.99 when it goes live per month, which will... For some folks, it's going to make more sense. Um, and I appreciate that not everybody can just drop a few grand. Um, that's why we're not we're not going to pitch it hard. Um, Daryl, uh, may have missed this. Can I have an outline? Yeah, so you can refine the outline it generates and have it apply your version of the outline. You do need to keep similar structure, at least for the moment. Uh, but we will be... Um, Big part of the alpha here, right, is to get people's feedback. What do you really want? What do you need in this platform? At the moment, as it is laid out, it does some pretty wild stuff right out the gate. Um, and the beauty of that is you might just get what you wanted all along right out the gate without even having a big in line, uh, input of an outline or something like that. Um, that was the challenge, really, right? Was, hey, can we build this thing from scratch? All right, in the background, while we're going here, while we're getting questions answered, I need one more ridiculous book idea to run through this thing. Can we double the credits and come up with 300-page book? So, kind of? So, Aaron, you could theoretically, and I haven't experimented with this too much, but you could... Let's say you had three parts to a big subject. Like you had, well, it's simply like beginner copy, copywriting guide for beginners, copywriting guide for intermediate, copywriting guide for experts. You generate those three books, you combine them, you have a 450 page book in about half an hour. Oh boy. It's fun doing the Sasquatch, Douglas. All right, give me, give me something, Douglas, give me something in context with Sasquatch. It's got to be more than just a book about Sasquatch. I'm thinking, like, there's, there's, there's a problem related to Sasquatch. Okay. Oprah, that's good feedback, man. I, I, you know, do me a favor, um, Nick, copy some of these, uh, the feedback on the pricing. Let's see what we can do. I mean, for this month, of course, uh, for the alpha, we're just giving this discount, double the credits, um, just as a thank you for folks who want to come in early. But the the year pricing is what can value the or give us the ability to give that discount, if that makes sense. Uh, can you have your written? Can you have? Written your copywriting book with that, uh, with this, that being said. Okay, John, yeah, that's a good question. In fact, like that was the challenge, right? For me was, can I get this pretty darn close to a first draft of my copywriting book? And I've exceeded that in my opinion for myself. 
Now, second drafts, third drafts, revising, that's another phase of this that we want to build in more tools as part of the, the membership project is to build in tools to help refine things, grow things, idea generation, all that stuff. Um, but right now it's it's a manuscript generator. And um, I'm very proud of the, the base where it is right now. And I'm so excited about the prospect of being able to focus more on optimizing the actual generation process um, because I've had to deal with a lot of the tech of building the actual like uh, app Login systems, everything. So, unfortunately, um, money back guarantee. Okay, so Tim, that's a good question. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna say there's no money back guarantee because, of course, if it's not working for you, you hate it. Like, um, I'm not gonna keep your money. <laughs> However, don't buy this with the intent of just kicking the tires around. If you see the value of, of generating a book like these can do um then it's a no-brainer and just talk with me let's see what we can do to make it reach your expectations that's the idea with this alpha launch right is if if you're not happy with it you drop 2k and it doesn't feel like you're getting your value out of it i'm asking a favor there to help me get it to that value pain or a point for you if that makes sense um yeah martha that makes sense let's Let's make a health book. Give me a topic. Let's let's have it do a health and wellness book. Um, of course, you know, with the challenge of AI simply having a decent amount of hallucinations, hallucinations, you can ask it to give you health statistics, and it's going to make them up if you want it to. So it's better, in my opinion, to um, uh, go back through and revise and add in studies, examples, based on statistics. Um, that's generally how I recommend it. I sh oh, there's a couple bonuses I forgot about. Um, I'll just mention them off top. I think most people who are gonna buy are gonna buy, but you know, maybe it's will hold you, it's push you over the top. All right, um, I'm also gonna be including all of my GPT prompts that I've been collecting over the last, what? Two or almost three years now. Um, I have hundreds and hundreds of prompts. Um, you guys want to see something kind of cool? One of my prompts. This is a prompt buying and selling um, platform. I think it's my Google account. Is it? I don't know. Let's see. This is, oh yeah. I've made almost four grand selling one prompt. For six bucks on this platform. It's hilarious. Looks like it's gone down a bit, but you'll have that. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna compile these all and, and put them in kind of a bonus for you guys. And I'm also going to um, include my mid journey um, prompts. Is this it? Uh, Dennis, that's a good question. I'll let this load up, but I want to I want to show you guys some fun stuff. Okay, uh, go right now, buy moveletype.ai slash join. <laughs> oh, I forgot my face is like huge on here. Okay. Um, the course element. So what is the course if not a differently the uh, or con differently constructed book? So it's not fully there yet. I'm hoping by the end of the month to have it live, but when you create you change it to a course, it's going to put it in a module slide format, outline format, that um, will give you everything you need to go and record a course on the subject. Still in the works, it's going to be built on the same philosophy structure of the books themselves, like problem-solving books. Um, but, yeah, that's that's definitely in the works. Um, communicating with Cuttlefish, Unmastering the Mysteries <laughs> Delafoid intelligence. Um, okay. Huh? Question mark. That's your username. Every time I see you chat, um, I think you're saying, huh? Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I have an outline with different topics. Yeah, you can, you can edit. So in that middle phase of generation, we'll take a look at one more book here. Um, Patrick, you can edit the book down. You want it to be less than 150 pages. 
Okay, a lot of good questions. A lot of good questions. Ed, thanks for signing up. Yes. So what I'll do there, it's possible that um, you didn't get your sign up email. I'm going to go and check every single person signed up right after the webinar here and make sure uh, each one of you get your login set up. Um, Dennis, appreciate that, brother. Super fan. We'll take it. Um, let's see. No word limit. Oh, how to naturally cure heart disease. Okay. So let's put that as the project name. By the way, so the project name doesn't actually have anything to do with the, uh, or the category. I'm just going to, uh, okay. The big idea. Now, as we close out here, I want to just talk a little bit about this concept of big ideas. What is a big idea? Why does it matter? And how does it work? So to me, a big idea is a distillation of years of experience in problem solving down into a very simple insight or um, idea that makes sense right away. It's the title of the book, The 4-Hour Work Week. Straightforward, big idea behind it, like implied right in the title. Um, think of all, actually put in some books that you guys love. Like, let's try to think of the big ideas behind them. Um, a lot of times it's a contrarian point of view. Like, um, I love those kind of sayings, like, it's not always about doing things better, sometimes about doing better things, stuff like that. Um, got into Slack, but not new type. Okay. Yeah, anybody signed up, dude, you guys rock. Um, I will make sure you get in there. Um, yes, let's talk about copyright there for a second, Oscar. That's a very good question. Power of now. Appreciate you, Douglas, for coming in. Um, where do we buy? Uh, MovableType.ai slash join. Should be pinned to the top of the comments there. Atomic Habits, the Slide Edge, the Power of Now, right? Killer stuff. So um, with this concept of curing heart disease, what's a big idea? And see how you put cure in, you know, uh, so let's give it, let's give it a leading big idea. Let's say the unconventional approach to uh, treating heart disease proactively and without, so I'm, I'm, I'm not even worried about this being like a sexy title. It's just I'm trying to encompass the essence of the big idea here. How the unconventional approach to treating heart disease proactively and without relying on uh, loads of medication, right? Now, again, we could go heavy on the extra context here. Like, in fact, let's do this. Let's go. I'm going to use AI to write AI. Are you ready for this? So I'm going to go in GPT-4. I'm going to say, uh, give me, a, a rework the following. Oh, you guys can't see that, can you? Oh, yeah, you can't hang on. Let me just uh, zoom in here. A statement below into a high-level detailed pro provocative big idea idea that could serve as the foundation of a contrarian uh, book about heart health statement. I've gotten really lazy with my uh, prompts. Um, so Theo, we talked about this bit um, earlier. Two things. One, the next iteration of this technology, I'm really, really wanting to get to the point where we're letting people upload loads and loads of their own content and context about the subject. So creating your own library of research to pull from. We're not quite there yet. The The foundation is there, though. Um, the Mirror Makers, dude, you're, I love that book. Oh, my gosh. Such a good book. Um, Yeah, Grace, so can you elaborate more on the difference? Um, if you want to sit, this is about, uh, I'd say about 150 different prompts um, that generate the book. So you'd have to go and plug them all in if you want to do it manually. 
Um, I'm not giving those away. Just kidding. All right. So in this paradigm, sh paradigm shifting manifesto, we explore the audacious, unorthodox approach to cardiac care that uh, champions uh, provoke the drug-free strategies over some pharmaceutical de dependencies, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's... Uh... Oh, no! Oops. I think I messed up. I, s I forgot. Uh, we'll, we'll let it... We'll see what it does. I accidentally selected course. <laughs> and I forgot to disable that option, so that should be interesting. Uh, two X credits means we can create two books. No, you can create up to 240 books. So two X credits. Um, that just means double the normal credits that we're going to have for that package. And I got to, oh, I'm going to be spending the afternoon fixing this little visual glitch right here. It's going to drive you mad. Oh, and I'm going to give you guys all my prompts that I use in my mid journey, um, generation as well. Got a lot of, some of these are really cool. Um, I should have those up in the next week or so in the members area. So if you want to illustrate your book, we don't, I, I like it. I'm a big believer of not tapping into um, subpar technology for this thing. You, there's no API for mid journey, so I can't generate them for you, but I'm not happy with the alternatives. So I'd rather just give you the prompts. God, I love Mid Journey so much. So good. I mean, it blows my mind. I'm a very like visual person. Oh, it's so cool. Anyways. Um okay, we're we're letting that book run in the background here. Any other questions as we kind of roll this thing out together um, that I haven't answered? Just yet. Sorcery. That's <laughs> Yolanda. That is true. I think I I think I broke this one because I selected course. I'm gonna I'm gonna I gotta make a note to fix that. The fun parts of running software companies. I uh all right. Alright. Um Okay, so Oscar, copywriting question, uh, copyright question, and are these able to be gener or, uh, published and sold? Okay. Uh, what would you resell this service for? Whatever you want, man. Uh, Jim, I retired from Jasper a, a few months ago. We got, we did really good with our um, uh, revamp of the affiliate program, and then I kind of felt like I um, hit my my. Uh, Peak of what I could offer there from that perspective. Ooh, look at all these Slack messages. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to have to fix this book after class because uh, Sean was smart and uh, set it to book mode. So, it, or sorry, course mode. So it probably screwed up. But I'll uh, I'll follow up with you, um, Martha, and get you that book just because I, I want you to be able to see it when it's done. Um, okay, so copyright. Let's talk about this just for a second. Something important to keep in mind, and this applies to everything in AI at the moment. The law has recently been adjusted um, so that you can uh, monetize things generated through AI. However, in a court of law, you cannot go and argue for a copyright claim like you would for um, if you exclusively use AI content. And that's why um, I highly recommend looking at this as a sketch of a painting that you're going to refine. Um, it's a rough outline of a, a mold. So the idea with the copyright is the more you adjust it, the more it's yours. This is a founding, foundation point. Now, can you go and sell it? Yes, you can. Um, the only challenge there is you're not going to necessarily and this is not something that you're going to probably be doing anyways. I, my book's been bootlegged the heck and back. Um, so, you know, going after copyright claims is a pretty lackluster endeavor anyways. Um, but the way the law stands right now is uh, 
purely AI generated stuff, you're going to want to refine it a bit before you publish it. And you're going to want to do that anyways, right? Like, unless you're giving it away for free, like an ebook, or sorry, like a lead generation tool, or you're not so worried about it, you're going to want to edit it, refine it, just like you, like, guys, a couple hours with it. That's all we're asking there. Um, does that make sense? And you can read up on the copyright and AI on the, um, <laughs> trust me, I, I pay close attention. Um, Tony Fox, do you offer an affiliate program? Guys, I forgot to mention this. Um, so if you sign up as an alpha member, we are going to open the affiliate program first uh, for the first 60 days of our official launch, which um, the goal is September. Um, we're going to allow the first folks who sign up um, as affiliates, or sorry, for the alpha program to be affiliates first, just as a, a reward for those Um Uh, just got off work. Yeah, there will likely be a replay. Um, no Facebook group at the moment. Unfortunately, we're, we're sticking with the Slack, but we will, I'm sure, open up the Facebook group at some point. Uh, Sean, with team members added, can you hide personal projects from their view? That's a very good question. Um, I'll build that if that's what, if you want something like that. Um, we can, we, I'll just make a note. Enable uh, private projects option. Yeah, should be easy enough to do. Oof. Woo. Yeah, Theo, so these books are designed in a way that they are not spitting back facts and statistics as much as ideas and arguments and stories. No AI at the moment that's publicly accessible um, is built in a way that will return information like a search engine would. And that's by design, right? That makes sense. Um, so the way this technology works is it's a logic engine. It's not a search engine. So if you instruct it to give you false facts, it'll come up with some, some dandy ones. So the way we've worked around that is have it uh, give you logic and arguments for a um, uh, a solution to a problem in the book as opposed to facts and figures. You can, of course, go in and add your own supporting evidence like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, Oscar, you would think, but um, go, go to ChatGPT, play around, and ask it for supporting evidence or websites or whatever, and it's going to give you false information. We had to work really hard to get around that. Um, I'm very excited to read my Barbie Oppenheimer book. I think this may be the most exciting book I've ever written. Young patient once, small stroke from cracking the internet. I know, I'm sorry, Jim. I try. I, try. I need to stop. Bad habit. Yeah, I even barred Oscar. They're, they're logic engines. They're not, um, they're, they're neural networks. They're, they're not, um, they're not searching for information, if that makes sense, to their building logical. Um, I can't even explain it because I don't really understand it very well. All right, Brian and Angel, welcome. Okay, if you guys aren't getting the link just yet, don't worry. First thing I'm going to do once I get off here is I'm going to go pee, but then I'm going to clean up any loose ends where you didn't get a uh, login or anything like that. Cool. Probably based. Um, Longest book you can make? Well, so at the moment, it's not about how much. It's about the quality, right? Like any good book. We found a pretty nice middle ground of length versus value, of about 150 pages. Um, but let's say you have three big ideas you want to solve, address, make three different books, put them together. I should, I should really start publishing books on this stuff. Um, Cool. Martha, you are a saint. Love having you here. Guys, I think we're going to uh, wrap it here soon. For clarity, this includes the ability to create courses. It will, Tony. Yes, at the moment, the course module is not fully functional. But uh, yes, it, those credits will be worked in books and courses. So um, 
I'm going to reach out to each and every one of you who signed up. We are uh, going to have quite a few, I think, <laughs> that uh, might need help getting logged in. But don't sweat it. Get you guys sorted out. Appreciate you all coming on today. It means the world to bring this thing alive with you guys. Um, this is a dream come true for me in uh, a logical um, next step in my mission to understand how to best communicate with the world in a positive way. So, jumped in late, super interested. There will be a uh, replay, I would imagine. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you all. I'm going to call it there, guys. Um, I'm going to put my email in here if you have any questions or you hit any uh, first off, here's support's email, um, which is me as well. Uh, you, If you have issues signing up or anything like that, but if you have any direct questions that I didn't get to today, hit me up. Excited to have you all in the alpha group. We'll get you all cleaned up today. I imagine there's going to be a lot of headaches until we get everybody in. But um, appreciate you guys, and let's do it. Let's make some awesome stuff. Talk soon, guys. And Theo, I'm hoping to goodness this recorded and there will be a re replay. If not, I'm in trouble. Love you all. Appreciate it.